Holy shit. Remember Monster Rancher games that aren't Ultra Kaiju? They exist. It's crazy. We're going monkey mode this month with the laziest boy around, brother. And it's my man, Mr. Ape. He's a rude dude who fights with food. He's a monkey with an attitude. He'll get you with the banana slamma or the spinorama. It's contagious enough to kill your grandma. Slaps and thwacks, wraps, whacks, and snacks. He'll give your dog a heart attack. If you're not careful, you're gonna get waxed by Mr. Ape. This video is about Ape. Ape is a casual powerhouse. He's got great stats, a great lifespan, and great techs. He's got a ton of ease of use stuff all bundled together with the caveat of having a terrible starting nature, meaning he's a little stinker and likes to cheat early in life until you can wrangle his nature up to a usable point. This can be sidestepped pretty easily by running most of his subbreeds, as the golem, plant, air, and galley subbreeds all boost his nature tremendously, making an ape with these subs one of the best starter monsters for someone new to the game. Competitively, the horrendously slow 18 guts rate really hurts him, but is it actually enough to offset his high tech strength? Like most monsters with really slow guts rates, Ape has powerful basic techs, but even among this company, he shines like a golden banana. Everything Ape has is slightly more committal than average, but Slap is his most spammable option. Great accuracy and chunky damage for only 13 guts is already pretty good, but when you factor in the withering, this tech makes Ape a real threat when facing other slow guts rate monsters. It's not great versus tanks compared to his other techs, as it tends to proc anger and not do enough damage otherwise, but it is a basic tech. What do you want? You can't get rid of it, so it helps that, you know, it's really good most of the time. Thwack is a king among basic techs, the second strongest basic tech in the entire game after Golem's kick at 20 force, but it's also got good hit and a bit of withering for 16 cost, which is really strong. That said, its animation time is always at least one tenth of the entire match on a hit, gives opponents an insane amount of time to build up guts. Luckily, multiple Thwacks chain together enough to run out the clock and make the guts regeneration completely unusable, because most of the time it'll straight up kill. As far as power techs go, Ape only has nukes. Grab throw is an inexpensive mini nuke, maybe the least nuke-like of his nukes. What am I trying to say here? As strong as Thwack, when Thwack crits for just 2 extra guts, this move has a huge force to guts ratio. Unfortunately though, Ape can't really afford to swing something as inaccurate as Grab Throw unless it's going to end the game for him more often than not. This is a very valuable tech versus tanks, but you'll probably want to have at least one empty slot on Ape to let it build up its guts, and sometimes not attacking is a better option than using Grab Throw. Roll Assault is a great way to win in the first 3 seconds of a match. And Mango's moving on! The top 8. Another big jump in damage, but Roll Assault also ups the withering and also has a marginally more usable hit rate than Grab Throw. 27 cost is expensive on Ape, but this is your main gamble tech. For odds a bit worse than a coin flip, you can end the match before it even begins, or get a huge lead versus tanks. Tank apes usually run this move since they can't handle getting withered and being able to get damage out of the gate is invaluable. Even if it's a little bit risky, swinging on 27 guts at the game open is better than getting withered and never being able to use it later on. Swing Throw is Ape's lone power special tech, and it, again, is also a substantial jump in force. Now we're getting into funky mode numbers. 61 force is obscene. Only a few techs in the game hit harder than Swing Throw. And putting your opponent in the centrifuge evidently really does jostle their brain, not only their body, because this tech does a truckload of withering on top of the damage. This tech is incredibly expensive for Ape at 50 guts, but it's also a good chance to just instantly win. Even tanks can't take a 61 force 37 withering hit without being put into a dire situation. This move covers up slap, which itself is a good tech, but sometimes you just want Ape to wait until it has more than 50 guts to start slapping. And Swing Throw gives you some nice utility in this regard, because, you know, it can't attack with less than 50 guts if this move is the active one. And that's it. Ape's only got three power techs he can learn through Errantry. It's kinda wild. In Monster Rancher 1, he had a few more, but they got repurposed as intelligence techs in Monster Rancher 2. So let's start with those. Sneeze. Yeah, Sneeze was a power tech in Monster Rancher 1. Sneeze is not really what Ape wants to be spending its guts on in Monster Rancher 2, though. Low damage and really high withering, Sneeze really only works to keep a lead once you're already up. Unfortunately, though, it's kind of a necessary pickup on every single Ape intelligence build, since it's his only way to cover up slap. When a tech's best purpose is covering up another tech, you know it's not great. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. Blast was also a power tech in Monster Rancher 1 for some reason. I guess it doesn't make much sense as an intelligence tech either, but you know. Blast is Intelligence Ape's only way to cover up Thwack, but unlike Sneeze, it's actually genuinely pretty good. 
Decent damage and obscene withering for a quick animation keeps this tech well above water, even if the cost leaves more than a bit to be desired. This is not a negligible amount of guts cost on an ape. Like Sneeze, this move is best used to keep a lead going, but unlike Sneeze, if this hits early on in the game, you're probably in a really good spot. Ape's withering techs aren't very accurate, but his hit techs more than make up for that. Boomerang is a tad expensive, but it does a bit of everything. Great hit rate along with decent damage and considerable withering on a good animation time, Boomerang ends up being one of Ape's most reliable tools. It won't single-handedly win you the fight, but especially for slow guts rate monsters like Dragon and even other Apes, it'll work wonders to help you build advantage. Big Banana is one of the most accurate techs in the game, but that's all it has going for it. Plus 18 hit is hard to discount, unless of course you look at the rest of the numbers on the tech. Then it's pretty easy to discount. Upped Force from Boomerang is nice, but the withering is completely offset by the astronomical 9 second animation time. 9 seconds! And allowing his opponents 9 seconds the opportunity to build guts is not something Ape often has the luxury of being able to afford. In Vanilla Monster Rancher 2, this is one of the worst techs in the game. Maybe not on a straight statistical level, but definitely with the added context of competitive play. The removal of the 45 guts limit in DX makes this move significantly more usable, especially when it comes to running down the clock in a close game. But unless it finishes off your opponent, it's often a liability still. Bomb is a pretty standard sharp tech, arguably overpriced even at its under 20 guts cost considering it does a little bit of everything, but nothing well. It's kinda like a bad version of Boomerang. It's not an unusably bad tech, but most players running Intelligence Ape only pick it up as a prerequisite for our next tech. Big Bomb is Ape's best source of damage on the Intelligence side. An interesting upgrade to Bomb, as it only ups the Force, Withering, and Sharpness by two measly points each, but it gains a hefty boost to hit percent, which makes up the Guts cost and makes the tech actually pretty usable. While it's weaker than Roll Assault even on a crit for basically the same price, the accuracy gives risk-averse players an option in slot 4. And now we come to Tasty Banana, Ape's lone intelligence special tech, an expensive healing tech that only has 30 force with an atrocious minus 25 hit. This is the worst healing tech in the game, and healing techs are already some of the worst techs in the game. Baku has a healing tech that costs 10 less and has 5 more hit percent, and Baku has a better guts rate. Christ, even Undine has the exact same tech with higher hit percent in Vitalization, and she's running with a 9 guts rate, and no one runs Vitalization. Tasty Banana is in healing tech hell, with the singular ray of light being that it has the shortest animation time of any healing tech, I mean, for whatever that's worth. Ape is a monkey with very few techs, which usually means the monster ends up being hyper-optimized, but somehow, Ape is not. Ape has a variety of different builds depending on the format you want to play him in. Roll Assault and Swing Throw both act as good nukes depending on how you think the meta will be, with Roll Assault instantly closing out games for speed monsters using Slap to clean up, whereas Swing Throw instantly closes out the game versus, well, everyone. It just has to land the hit first. The former is much more risk averse, whereas the latter is a Hail Mary. Some people pick up Grab Throw, but it's often rare. Whack usually ends up doing the same job, but it costs a bit less and it's more reliable. Leaving a slot open so Ape can build up some guts is always a good call as well. On the intelligence side, you'll need to pick up his withering text to cover up the basics. Sneeze isn't great, but what are you gonna do? No, I'm living in a nightmare. Blast, Boomerang, and Big Bomb, the three Bs, make up the majority of the powerful intelligence Ape builds. And while there's something to be said for leaving slot 4 open to allow Ape to build up an early advantage, this ends up meaning that your only real reliable slot is slot 3 because of the basic text, and often using up your guts before he walks forward has more pros than cons in a situation like this. You can run Big Banana in formats with high speed and low life like Welterweight, but it's an easy way to fall behind versus tanks. Ape is also maybe one of the best candidates for mixed attacker builds, since Boomerang kind of just supplements the power of his power build without really taking anything away. You can run Banana in conjunction with Roll Assault or Swing Throw, or you can just run it with the basics. Both of these builds are pretty solid, it just depends on what you're looking for. Flower Ape is the uncontested best ape in the game, with a significantly higher guts rate than any of the other monkeys. You can run a bad guts regen ape to marginally boost his accuracy and damage output, but if you're doing this, it's recommended that you only run techs in slot 1 and 2. The less time it spends attacking, the better. Ape is a dedicated speed monster 99 times out of 100. Unless the meta calls for the ability to survive multiple hits like 2997, running him as a tank often results in him getting brutalized by withering and never actually having a chance to play. Slap and Thwack may be good, but coming off of a low guts reserve, they're just as ineffective as most other basics. So that's how the monkey rolls. Ape is far from being the strongest monster in the game, but it is just on the verge of greatness. He's a solid competitive pick and is really easy to raise and build. He's got a better chance to upset the top tiers than most of the other monsters in this game, and if he had a slightly better guts rate, he might be a top 10 contender. Consider building an ape if you haven't before. You've got a lot more options than it appears at first glance, and most of them are good ones. Thanks for watching another Rancher Rundown. 
If you'd like to have a say on the next topic I cover, consider joining the Discord or the Patreon. I also stream three days a week, Monday through Wednesday, on twitch.tv slash moosebones. If you want to know more about Ape or want to see some classic Moosebone stuff, one of my very first episodes was an in-depth look at Ape in the context of competitive play. Lots of it only applies to vanilla and hard mode, but you might learn something anyway. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.